Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Emil Vihandre and welcome to Physical Science. The topic for today is Valence Shell Electron Pair Propulsion Theory or VSEPR. And with this and the other lessons that we had, we finally get to determine the shape of a molecule. But first, let's apply what we learned from the previous videos to make sure that you still remember. Let's try bonding nitrogen and hydrogen. First, how many valence electrons does each atom have? Correct, 5 for nitrogen and for hydrogen, it's only one valence electron. By bonding the two atoms, which atom is stable? It's hydrogen, but for nitrogen, it currently has six valence electrons. So we have to bond it with another atom. So let's try adding another hydrogen atom. By adding more hydrogen atoms to bond with nitrogen, makes the valence electron for nitrogen finally reach 8. Now this makes it stable. So we have formed NH3. Since we have 3 hydrogen atoms and a single nitrogen atom. Observe the shape of the molecule. Since its shape is not really this, but... In reality, the bonds are bent as if they were pushed downward. But what made it bend? It was those pair of electrons on top. Because some electrons are already paired up within a single atom, they are not shared. These are what we call electron pairs. These electron pairs are not used for bonding, but they will affect the shape of our molecule. And that's why it's called Valence Shell Electron Pair Propulsion Theory. VSEPR predicts the molecular shape of a bonded molecule. VSEPR theory assumes that the shape of the molecule is determined by the repulsion of electron pairs. Looking at the molecule, can you count the number of bonds and lone pairs formed? We have two bonds and two lone pairs formed but they are all considered as electron pairs. And these are what we will use in shaping our molecule. Looking at our shapes without the lone pairs starts us at five types. The linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramidal, and octahedral. The linear gives us two electron pairs in the form of bonds. Again, we will discuss first the shapes without the lone pairs. Example is carbon bonded with oxygen. Shapes can be characterized by their bond angle. The bond angle is the angle between two adjacent bonds. For linear, we have 180 degrees. Next, trigonal planar. We have three electron pairs. Example is boron bonded with fluorine. We have a bond angle of 120 degrees. Third, we have tetrahedral. We have four electron pairs formed. Example is carbon bonded with hydrogen. The bond angle is 109.5 degrees. Third, we have trigonal bipyramidal. We have five electron pairs. Example is phosphorus bonded with fluorine. The bond angle is divided into two parts. The equatorial, which lies at the middle, measured horizontally to the nearest bond with an angle of 120 degrees. And the axial, which is measured starting from the equatorial upward to the nearest bond which measures to be 90 degrees. Lastly, the octahedral, has six electron pairs. Example is sulfur bonded with fluorine. A bond angle of 90 degrees. Looking at our CH4, 
can you count the number of electron pairs? Yes, we have 4 electron pairs. And comparing that to our NH3, does the CH4 have more electron pairs than NH3? No, since the lone pair counts as an electron pair, but we still have to change the name. Its new name is Trigonal Pyramidal. Looking back at our trigonal planar, if we replace one bond with a lone pair, this always changes the name. In this example, this changes it into bent. As the shape acquires more bonds, the more ways we can modify that shape by simply replacing those bonds with a lone pair. Now replacing one bond with a lone pair, we can now call this a trigonal pyramidal. Having two bonds replaced gives us the shape we call bent. I hope you learned something. See you in the next video. Goodbye!